we seek to make sure that we are still founded, that our foundation is still on you, that our principles, our morals, our character is still founded on who you are and who you have created us to be, God. So as we gather here today, God, let that be the echo that sounds in every direction from this area right now, God. I ask that you would surround us with your love, surround us with your truth, God, and that we will come together and fellowship here to see your glory come into this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord has been the people's guide. Right? Good night, everyone. Good evening. I'm Marcia Weeks, and welcome to Independence Roadside Parliament. Independence Roadside Parliament. Do you like the sound of that? Yes. Opposition? <laughs> Opposition fall in line. And we are here, and we are strong. We're still going. We are still going, we are still going, and it's really, really great to see everybody here this evening. And we are excited, we are excited. You know, we almost didn't have this event. You know that. You know that they tried all kinds of things to stop this event. But we're here. Thank you for everybody, all the encouragement that we have received, that we pushed ahead. And you see, we're ready. You came and we were set up waiting, right? Yeah. We're ready. ready. We're ready. Opposition? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, someone said, wait, is a, is a, is a, um, is a party they're trying to, to form over there? We said, no, we're just regular people. We're people who love our country. We're people who love our country. We don't have to love our country through a party. Who says we have to do that? We love our country. Yes? Strict yes. guardians. And we stand up as strict guardians. And we go open up our mouth because we're guarding. And we're watching. We need every party to know we're watching you. And the, mo the moment you move, we're going to say something. Once you step out, and I don't care what color it is. That's what we are defending. And we are here. We are here, we are here this evening. We are here to watch a very important film. It's called Barrow Freedom Fighter. And I want to tell you a little bit about how this, how I got involved in this, because somebody said, oh, you, Jamaica, what do you know about uh, Barrow? Well, and I think it was 2013 or 2014, I went to Canada. And um, some of you might have heard the story already and to promote another film of ours and called Chrissy. Anybody ever watch Chrissy movie? Yes, okay, wonderful. And um, while I was there, so the house we were staying at, they had a book on Barrow, and I read the book. And um, I said, oh my goodness, this is so inspiring. I, didn't, I mean, the most I heard about it was the first prime minister, and I heard, you know, that he used to, um, he loved to cook, you know, my children would come home from school and they would tell me that, but I didn't understand the measure of a man that he was. I didn't understand how the other prime ministers, Michael Manley, how they looked up to him. You know, I did not understand that, all of that. And I put the book down and I picked it up and I read it a second time. And I was so inspired, I was so moved by it. And I think, you know what I think? I think I was being set up for this time. Because if I had not gone through that journey, I would not know so much about Barbados. You see? And I came back from Canada and went to the then Minister of Culture, Stephen Lashley, and I told him that I really feel like I want to do a movie on Barrow. And he said, really? I said, yes. And he said, okay, we're going to try to help you. And you know, that, that, that was all he said, all that happened at that time. But I left that office and decided that I was going to do my best to make it happen. Eventually, though, I have to give Mr. Lashley um, his due. He did, you know, step up and and helped us, and uh, the Prime Minister as well, uh, Mr. Mr. Stewart. That's after I, I, he will tell you that I behave bad with the DLP too. Okay, they know the truth. 
But they came, they came because you know I started, I started up on them, and they made sure they followed up, followed through with everything that they had to do, so that we could have the the movie, um, the movie done. And for me, that has been one of the one of the the biggest thing that I've been life changing um, event of my life, really. Um, is doing this movie because I got to know so much about Barbados and about the people of Barbados and realized, you know, um, my place in, in the whole thing. And, and so I'm really, really honored. To, um, this evening, this movie has been, has traveled over the, throughout the world and we've won several awards with this movie in Atlanta, in, um, in Africa. And, you know, we won the top movie award in Africa uh, for, this, for this film. Barbados, you know, so we are we are very very honored to have it here uh, being shown to you tonight. Now um, we can't stream the movie, unfortunately, because we are signed uh, to a distributor in the U.S. All right, and so we what we what we signed is that we are not we can't show the movie. You know, we just can't get up and show the movie like that. So if we show the movie online, somebody could copy it. Right, and we can get it in some challenges, but um, so we can't go live tonight, unfortunately. Um, but um, I see Miss uh, Kimar there, and I'm gonna call him. We're, we're doing a little, uh, um, a little informal tonight, not the way we had planned. But as soon as it gets dark enough, we're gonna, we're gonna get started. We're gonna get started. But as, as, I know, as Kimar is coming um, to greet you all, let me tell you, you see the name Eric Holder there, right? How many of you know that he has been he has been on the heritage, right? Yes. yes. And he owns it. That's the former attorney general of the USA. And um, he happily decided that he would be in the race part of uh, being outside, the narrator of the film. And um, and we are we're happy. Well, we're in your domain, sir. You're in your yellow shirt. Your blue shirt, sorry. Blue shirt. You're in your blue shirt with your yellow polo, I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, keep on greet the people. We just have a couple minutes and then we'll talk afterwards. Good evening, everyone. Happy Independence to you, and I'm happy to see you all showing up in support of the call this evening. Uh, I am sure I've already felt that you have his part, not in my remorse. So as we proceed to celebrate national independence, I want us to be proud and wear yellow shirts, like Marcy is saying. I'm wearing blue shirts and the black, and uh, let us continue to wear the Barbados flag proud, as Barbados has always been a far driven in the world. So with that being said, I just wish to thank you all for the continued support. Thank you for showing up on the show every other night, dedicating three hours to supporting the people on the panel. Uh, we love you where we would be. So, thank you very much for that. I am extremely proud to be seeing the children coming out because we need the young to continue the movement. So, I am very happy to see the kiddies outside. Um, so, we are on, on Bassett Road, our favorite spot. Uh, we will not have it any other way. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of history about the property. This was actually one of the properties or the domains of Mr. Barrow. And he and Mr. Tudor and Ramsey's cattle and those persons. A lot of ideas, brilliant ideas came from working here. Uh, this was one of the stomping ground. But those gentlemen, as you can see, uh, they're, they're keeping us, they're keeping us. So, independence, I want to encourage you to continue the proud history that we have. I see Pastor Ferdinand here. 
Uh, so I will give him a chance to come to the microphone to celebrate with us. So welcome to Pastor Ferdinand I have another engagement I have to attend this evening, that's why I'm dressed up. Uh, I leave for that and then I come back, so I have a, I have a hectic evening ahead of me. And in that event I'm supposed to sing, I'm not singing here. Alright, uh, and I'm not here in a pastoral role either. I'm here as a, a citizen of this country. I'm here as a concerned citizen of this country. I'm here as I heard Reverend Ken Roy Burke say in the independent service to hear him here as a proud Barbadian and a proud citizen of this country. And I'm here to fight for the well-being and future of this nation. Thank God for all that's been done. You know, I had no idea that we were in such a prestigious location as what Kimar just informed us. And it's no wonder that there has been a sense of a drawing affinity to this location over the last several weeks. We have continued to host here, and you know, uh, we have a saying in our religious circles that God is a set up God. He sets things up and we couldn't get a number of different venues and maybe Marcy you understand why right now. You couldn't get all the other venues because we needed to hear from Kimar this evening what was the heritage of this location. And if the ideas were birthed here from people like Ramesses, Cattle and Errol Barr and all these different early politicians of our era and of our lifetime, if this is where that happened, I think it's a good place for what we are conceptualizing to happen as well. Can I hear an email? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I did come down with a, I, I did come down with a fire in my system to to deal with this matter of a gay ambassador appointed to this country. And I am and, and I am quite furious about it. And the reason I'm furious about it is because it exposes us to some serious consequences if the ambassador who is gay determines who is going to get a U.S. visa to visit the United States. And uh, I, I, I won't have the time tonight, I don't know if you'll have it later, but I will share a lot concerning him to you so that you will understand who we're dealing with. He's a very involved individual in the LGBTQT2 plus agenda. Very, very involved. And as the ambassador, he can set policy for America here in the Caribbean, in the East, smaller states, Eastern Caribbean. And if you have people who are speaking out against this agenda, clearly they are going to be threatened in terms of their visas. I have a visa and I am not going to be silenced by any visa. Let's be clear on that. I don't need to go to the United States. Let's be, let's be frank about this. Right? We, don't, we don't need to. We thank God for all. And you know, you gotta, you gotta excuse me. Whether you like him, love him, hate him, I don't care. But I am praying Trump gets back in to get rid of this crap. Because he was not supportive of this agenda. Right? But we got a guy in there now that, you know, I wish I had the time to tell you a little bit more about him. And, and his agenda for the world that is being foisted upon people across the world. And we simply will not lie down and roll over and accept it. It is as simple as that. I want it to be clear this evening. I have no problem what sex you want to choose. That's your business. Not even God has a problem with that. I'll tell you what he has a problem with. He has a problem when you try to push that over on other people. He has a big issue with it. Okay, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not that he encourages it, likes it, or otherwise, but you're free to do what you like. If you want to go have sex with an animal, you can go and do that. That's your business. He will allow you to do that and send you to the place you need to go if you don't repent. It is as simple as that. So I'm not going to be imposing my views on anyone. I'm going to be sharing them quite openly and telling you what I believe, and I'm not having anybody impose upon me their belief system that does not gel with the morality that the one that we have enshrined in our constitution and enshrined in our national anthem has established. And I'm going to leave you this one statement. The Lord has been the people's guide for past 300 years. With him still on the people's uh, side, we have no doubts or fears. 
but you don't have him on your side unless you do what he says. So let's be clear about that. If you don't follow what he says, you don't have him on your side. You're going to have him as an enemy. And you do not want to have, and I do want to call him God. I'm not calling him anything. That's my position. And I will respect anyone else who wants to call him anything else. That's your business, but just don't try to impose it on me. And I won't try to impose mine on you. All right, I will share it freely and you can do what you like with it. That's the pastor speaking now. All right, so thank you very much. It was a joy being here with you. I'm going to slip away for a few minutes, uh, perform at another, uh, another anniversary and, and event and come right back to you to be here for the finale, all right? So you stay put. If you haven't got on your phones and got all the others that'll hear you, get on them now. And what do we say on the program? Share, share, share. You okay? Get it out there. Go call people. You got the permission to use the cell phone and get them down here. Thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you for supporting the cause of our country. Thank you. Good afternoon again. I think it's evening, sorry. Um, <laughs> so this evening, uh, I just want to speak to you not from the platform thing, but directly to you and to ask you some questions, of, well not only questions, but to discuss you independence and what was independence and how the independence economy of Barbados helped to push this country to where it is today. So feel very free to take in a point if you wish or so along the way for a discussion as opposed to a speech. So I want to contribute tonight I don't know if you all agree with me that before we had the term lost decade, but now there seems to be a lost generation on our hands. Part of the lost generation uh, includes the high levels of taxation that we have to pay along with the reduction of public social services along with the deterioration of the country, the attack on the family structure, the attack on the schools and youth, and an attack on the elderly via the changes in the NAS. Now, Arabaro built a legacy in Barbados which was principled on development and the social welfare state. That's how a lot of us got to go to school from primary school, straight to university level, had free health care at all levels. Uh, and he used with the state resources at the time to take care of the people of our base. But if you all can agree with me, there were always some conservative elements in Barbados who believe that the state resources should not go to taking care of the masses and people in the country, that every man or woman should be able to pay his or her way through the passage of time that you live in Barbados or you're a Barbados citizen. So he got pushed back from early when he put his vision of there to develop Barbados. Today, we are seeing that vision that Arabaro had destroyed from the bottom up, really. So, in 2018, can anybody recall Barbados borrowing so heavily from the IMF in the history of this country? Never. Right? Arabaro had a vision for using credit or debt in developing a country. So the, mo the money that he would have borrowed at the time because he was one of the main economists in the country who introduced deficit financing or debt financing. 
But the money that he borrowed, at least you can see where they went. Education, health, roads. You can see tangibly what that debt gave us. Nowadays, under the new Republican team, point me to what four billion plus dollars in debt since 2018 has gone How many schools have been built? How many hospitals? How many houses? I show, I'm sure that you all saw what my scene showed us online in terms of the imported houses, all in grass. I would not be surprised to realize that the equipment has been stolen as we sold in the private market. These are things that happened with our money before. But this is what we speak about, or I'm speaking about, when our bar gave us independence. But now the same persons that he would have educated are turning us back into dependence. He gave us institutions like the NAS, the Central Bank. Develop the national treasury. Develop systems where the credit unions and private lending insurance firms were able to lend the state of Barbados money. Um, during the time of Tom Adams, we have our IMF program. Fast forward to Erskine Sandy, where we had another IMF program. However, we had politicians since the 1990s who borrowed international debt. Oh. <laughs> At least we're happy to see the girl is being connected. At least the girl is being connected. It doesn't happen to regular so we but as I was saying, since the 1990s, a great injustice was done to this country. Barbados went on a borrowing spree during the 1990s and borrowed debt from international private banks. They borrowed debt from these institutions at very, very interest rates. That by the time 2008 to 2018, when the last government was in, they were solidly repaying all of the interest that would have been borrowed under the Oranapo period. So we had to be paying out large sums of interest out to the country to repay those large loans. $30 million of which goes to rebuilding the prison. So, Fast forward again, an election in Barbados is constitutionally supposed to be held in 2027. But whenever another administration comes in, they will have the same problem that Erskine Sanifer had, that Father Stroh had, which was to repay the interest on these loans borrowed from the international community. It was announced recently that Barbados is set to borrow $1.6 billion from the IMF for financial year 2023 to 24. Traditionally, that has never been so, where Barbados had to borrow these large amounts of foreign exchange every year. But the government's policies changed us from being independent, which means we had we have all our institutions to borrow from, like the Central Bank. We have control borrowing at the NAS. We could have also borrowed from our own treasury, and we could have also borrowed from the private banks and those systems, but the government destroyed all of that 
through the debt restructuring and the debt default and turn us over into the hands of the international monetary firm that our own taxpayer dollars not supporting us anymore is directly the IMS money that is supporting Barbados. That is dependence. The vision that I will borrow did not account for that type of economics in the country. We were also we were always supposed to be independent of these type of stringent controls where we elect people to run the parliament of our country. However, from the transition from independence to dependence, we no longer have full control over the parliament because the IMF and the IDB and other institutions dictate what bills and laws are passed through our parliament. So what sovereignty do we have? What freedoms do we have as compared to when we transition to independence? We have the freedom of speech. Based on the attack on Prince Academy of Dance, not so more. We had economic freedom. We, although we were being downgraded, we still were not borrowing, so we did not owe these people more than four billion dollars. So Barbados was. So Barbados was considered to be a traditionally free country with some of the most educated people in the world. Because our education system, don't mind a lot of people, is one of the best education systems in the world. That the average Barbadian can surpass the average American or European child in a classroom. But now we're reversing that based on the fact that the International Monetary Fund says that you have to cut budgets. So where do you as a people take your mandates from? Or the government, where do they take their mandates from? Do they get mandates from the people who brought them in? That has not been the case with the current government. But that level of democracy was fought for by Arab and the traditional leaders of the country. That you had the right to preserve your democratic voice as it relates to what bills and agendas go through your parliament. Listen to when Colin Jordan and Leslie Haynes were speaking about the NAS. They were saying that in negotiations with the IMF, they were forced to do specific things. How can an institution not elected by the people does not, well it has an office now, but it was not established to manage any type of affairs for the people. Be dictating to the government what you can and cannot do as it relates to your own sovereign affairs. But these type of conditionalities traditionally were used to work countries to their knees. Jamaica had a currency that was very strong, actually tied to the Great Britain Pound. Guyana had a very strong currency as well. Trinidad, and what all of these countries have in common, IMF programs. So the sad thing is that these countries have resources, bauxite, forestry, oil, natural gas, rivers, Cool. Barbados has its people. So when we recognize that every dollar in debt that the government borrows, Professor Richard Drayton of the UK wanted to know that at least six thousand dollars per person was at in debt was at a lot per person in this new $1.6 billion dollar bill that the government is seeking to borrow from the IMF. So that's $6,000 in debt on each man and woman's head to repay. In taxes. Yeah. 
So, well, these countries had the luxury of putting dollar tags on their resources that these big companies can then come in and exploit them. We don't have that level of resistance. The only bastion of resistance that we had was our ability to think and our ability to excel in education due to the empowerment that our borrower offering us that education straight up to UB level that we can compete and perform and provide services for large countries in the world. However, we have not been receiving the opportunities as the government prefers or governments prefer to engage the private sector to give the private sector tax cuts and subsidies and VAT holidays and tax holidays that they can then come in and participate in Barbados at a disadvantage to you, the people who also want to be entrepreneurs and involved in business. So when they're letting the conglomerates on us to take over major retail sectors in the country to control the cash flow of the country, then you put us in a stranglehold and then we move from independent to dependent. Our food import now, look at it, sky high. We import now, what are imported eggs? Chicken wings. So, we see the cycle continuing, a cycle of dependence. We should never be importing eggs in Barbados. But we have been nurtured to think that through tax breaks and tax cuts and subsidized living to businesses, that the government could open up windows and allow entrepreneurs to import into Barbados tax and duty free. We are not offering local Barbadians that same incentives from their own tax dollars. However, the government's vision is to keep you on welfare programs. $1,200 a month type programs. Where are you doing? Believe in yourself, pass a welfare check. So you will never think about gaining assets like land and housing, entering into business ventures. But I will now recognize what it would do to Barbados to continue that type of conservative economics where only the wealth was being tailored to a select few in the country. He enfranchised people to be owners of business. However, by the 1990s, we had a government that reversed that. That the major sectors in Barbados, including the Barbados National Bank, were sold out. And ironically, its name is now Republic Bank. <laughs> so now we are moving from independence for having our own national bank to dependence we are not dependent on Trinidad and Canada for banking services. Utilities. The government traditionally, through our borough's vision, social vision, was to offer subsidies to the people of Barbados, well subsidize electricity and subsidize water. What the government did to the people is short of heinous and a crime. Where they put a sewage and garbage tax that is more than your water bill, and 95% of this country is not connected to sewage, but you pay sewage tax. And the sewage tax is making $80 million a month, and it used the parliament again to reward the tax away from your eyes. So, I just want to encourage my people to recognize where 
because we lost our independence not only in name but trying to change it from a republic to bring for independence to republic but we've also lost it socially and we've also lost our independence financially not on an individual level but on a national level where Barbados has been bought on most states' knees like a beggar at the hands of the International Monetary Fund asking for leniency as opposed to discussing the national state of affairs with the people. So thank you very much. That was my brief contribution. Brief and brilliant contribution. Thank you, um, Kimar. Um, we are getting ready to start the movie. And I can see the children, they're eager. They're like, who's going to watch a movie? Um, I just want to say to you that I notice, you might notice you have not seen um, Mr. Franklin, the gentleman here. And um, he's not feeling well. And he tried, he was ready to come, he's just not feeling well. So keep him in your prayers and we and keep all of us in your prayers. Right? You speak good over him, we need him to we need him to live long. <laughs> Alright? So um, we uh, we're still gonna have our, our panel at the at the end and I see somebody here that um, I will ask her to join the panel. She doesn't know yet. And uh, at the end, but we're going to have our discussion after at the end of the movie. All right, so sit back and relax and enjoy. I still had a little tear right there. I told you I was really moved when I when I read the book on Mr. Barrow, and um, you know I, I cried then, and every time it touches me, and I get a, I, if I even wanted to stop. You know, sometimes you get a little discouraged. Let's be honest. Even putting on this event, I think I think the closest I came to getting real discouraged was trying to put on this event. Yeah. And look how I'm leaving here so encouraged yeah. and wanting to do more. How about you? Yeah. Honestly, I said, you know, um, God must have been looking um, from back in those times, you know, 2000, whenever I, I read that book. To this day, you know, and in this place that I'm hearing that that they used to meet in, in this place, in this area, in that room up there or somewhere here, and um, so for me, um, this is this is really, 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 really powerful. So I I hope that we have, um, as I told you, Mr. Franklin is not um, here tonight. Um, he's not well. Um, but, you know, he said he tried, he tried, he got ready and he was trying to come, you know, but um, we'll do it again for him another time. But we have um, Miss Ro Mrs. Rose Corbin with us and he did that brilliant, 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 brilliant um, um, sessions, um, those sessions with us on education reform. And I spot her in the audience, I said, you know, I think she, she, <laughs> She would do well here. <laughs> so um, you have watched the movie, and I wanted to know if you had any comments. What what about the movie has moved you? Um, was there anything that we, you know? Let's talk as a family. You know, um, is there anything that I saw the men on the um, periphery watching, and they were so involved. You know, um, what what about this movie? Is there something you want to talk about? A question that you have? Something you want to pose to the panel to discuss? Is that you? Anybody? Come. Hold a minute. With all that clapping and everything gone? Yes? Okay. I think what I like the most is very telling to these in two days. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I, I want to pose a question to the to the panel. When you um, you would have seen that um, that scene in the movie, right? When you told them to leave in two days and people were clapping, 
When you see that and you reflect on what is happening in Barbados now, do you think that we are at that, um, you know, that, that stage or that place where we, we have that kind of strength and quality that we can tell, um, you know, anybody is trying to ne negotiate with us that we feel we have a, a hand in it? Is there, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie as well. But based off what we've been seeing, if that was no, the government would say that we give a reduced tax rate only there. We'd be increasing our subsidies, please don't leave. Right? But it shows that El Barrow had a heart for the sovereignty the freedom and the independence of Barbados on the world stage. As opposed to now, we are becoming dependent on the world stage where we are like this and we are willing to accept any and everything from the international people, even putting sewage in the water. Right? So we need the strength of our borrow again to come and to help us to fight these people off because it's gone so bad that Modi's a credit rating agency can say to the people of Barbados that as long as you sign another IMF program, we will not downgrade you. Right? So you see the coercive power at play in terms of subduing Barbados. So we really need somebody at that type and level of principle to fight off the slavery that is impending on this country. Benke used to be a GIS with the like of Tony Cage and Glaston Holder. It rifles the production, rifles that standard. It rifles any CNN, any PBS. Excellent work. Independence 
the Right Honorable Aaron Barrow, stood in the UN amongst the nations of this world, the superpower, many with greater power than Barbados, many with equal or less power, lesser power. And he stood up in the UN how many years ago? 50, coming 57 years ago. Nine days old, baby, independent. And he proclaimed to the world. And you could say with me, what did he say? Friends, come on, people. Friends of God, satellites of man. And that is what the passion that was demonstrated, the confidence in a nation that was demonstrated. And also today, my husband will tell you, I asked him to Google for me, what did we receive from the colony, from not the colony, from Britain, when we became independent? What gift or gifts? Am I speaking too loud? No, no, no it's interesting. What gift or gifts did we receive as a dependent colony from Britain? Who would have reaped the harvest? I mean the harvest called sugar cane. The monies from sugar. What gifts did they give us? and there was no promise of any gift. If I get a chance later, I would read to you the perception they had of us when they debated in the UK Parliament about in the October of 1966, weeks prior to us becoming independent, how they described Barbados. They saw us already as a sovereign nation, although depend a dependent nation. But we weren't really dependent on them, you know. We were just a colony. We were just a colony. And my concern is that back then, Barrow did not go to the UN with cap in hand begging, saying, look, we've just become independent. We've cut ourselves off from the mother country. They pulled the nipple from our mouth. We're breastfeeding. Help us. Did he beg? No. Did he beg? No. with no natural resources, just his people. He did a beg, but he, and now even this year, not too long ago, Trudeau and the Australian, I think, Prime Minister, they've been quoting that, and the way it's going on, our current Prime Minister, she quotes it too. You remember when, uh, heaven is the name, the, 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 under Trump, when the Secretary of State called that meeting, Pompeo you or something like that, called that meeting in Jamaica, was it Jamaica, wherever, and we were let out. And that speech of a Prime Minister eloquently referred to, we would not be, be, be um, satellites. We would not allow superpowers to come in and divide CARICOM. But look how things have turned now. That we are sending 57 years on. 57 years is not 57 days. 57 years with greater resources, greater opportunities. We have suddenly become satellites of all. We have suddenly become, look at the latest EU. And 
and and and Kimar, he's one of my young men. We went to St. Michael together. Though I work decades ahead of you, right? Ah, we got big up St. Michael, right? But, but look at the recent EU Samoa Treaty that we've signed on to. And I wonder, it's over 400 in the, a, a two-page document. It's over 400 odd pages. I really wonder if our minister who signed us read it and understood it. I wonder, that's an aside, you didn't hear it. But we have now be signing on. Go back when we were only nine days old as an independent nation. Maturity. I believe we should have matured. Now we are going back to the EU, signing on every dotted line as if we are an literate. Signing on every dotted line. Signing on to the conditions signing on to the educators that will come back 20, 25 years. We are bound to this. Well, I would have been well into my 80s then. But I shudder for our tomorrows because I believe that I will live for three, three score, 10 or more. And many of you, and do, I saw a little boy there, a little girl, applauding a poem that but we have no regressed we have no regressed as an independent nation we have signed on to the UN too with the education reform and we have signed on to that um, sustainable development goal 544 and we have signed on to some of the same conditions some of the same condition, um, um, indicators as mentioned in the EU Samoa Treaty. I am not happy. I tell you folks, my husband will tell you, there are many nights I get up and I cry for Barbados. I cry for my nation. I groan at two and three and four i hold my head and i groan but i encourage you tonight to be on the watch to stand on i went to to, to jerusalem for 21 days my husband and i decided we will go to jerusalem not as far as the door group, but we'll go to jerusalem his was the second visit that was my first and we went around the, the, um, the old city of Jerusalem on what they call the Grand Flirt Wall. And there are local points on the walls where persons would position to see when the enemy was coming. And there would be position for the attack. I am calling you to stand on the wall stand on the wall because we have exchanged being colonized and we are being told, especially in education, decolonizing, you know that's the latest buzzword, the sexy term, but what I am asking, what are we exchanging as we decolonize? I am seeing a new form of colonization, recolonizing. I am seeing a new form that is going after not only the economic, but it is eroding and corroding us economically. But I am seeing that it is going to the moral, social fiber. Where are the persons in that we have elected to represent us in the House of Parliament who would stand up like Errol Barrett and say, not in my house. 
not in my place. I always refer to a movie called Higher Learning. And in that movie, it's a classroom scene and Lawrence Fishburne, the actor, the lead, the, the, the lead actor in that movie, he says, apathy corrodes the society from within. We cannot afford to be apathetic when we see the trends. We should be in independent square around this time, celebrating. Independent square is dead. The pigeons are living on this honorable man. And I hope that I have the opportunity to come back and share with you my own recollections, shared with my stepfather by my stepfather, but not my stepfather, my past father-in-law on his association with the Honorable Arab Barra. Yeah. That's my piece. Wow. <laughs> That's my piece. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We, we asked her a little question and I'm telling you that she came prepared to offload on us. And uh, wasn't it good? That was phenomenal. And from her head, no paper. Yes, proper. The man said proper talk. Yes, yes, like a mommy, mommy talking to us. Awesome. Yes. Um, anybody else, anything else from the movie? Because we wanna we wanna let the movie be our, our, our point of discussion.
And I will say this, the British politicians and the British parliamentarians said that Barbados was little London, little England, but now it's little Beijing or little China. So just watch the way Barbados votes at the United Nations and then we can tell the countries that Barbados are no satellites of. Thank you, Kimar. Thanks, Dave, for that question. Anybody else has, um, yes, Mr. Bob? <laughs> good to see you. I'm good night, everyone. I, I gave him my mic, and then my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm one of those persons who were born in 1966. So this time of the year is very passionate for me because um, I'm the same age as, as my country. Um, but I'm glad that we mentioned in this talk about education reform, and there's much discussion. There can be no education reform in Barbados unless we start to teach Barbadian history in schools. I'm going to tell you why. And, and part of that teaching has to be this movie as well. Because we have in our schools today, I'm a teacher, you know which school I teach at. We have in our schools today children who do not know the national anthem by heart or the national pledge by heart. They know little about our music and very little about the history of our sport. When I sit, when I fix that I coach work overseas, they have part of their um, tuition. They have to know American history. It has nothing to do with them. But here in our country, we are refusing to teach our Barbadian history and we're losing it. And there's, that is purposely done because you see what they're doing to our children. Because they want them to accept what is on the outside. But we have to insist when we get into those debates and discussion about education reform that Barbadian history must be part of the curriculum. That is what I want to say. Thank you, Thank you. I'm going to give the mic to um, 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 Mrs. Corbin, but I just want to confirm something that he's saying that um, I teach theater arts. And um, part of theater arts, you have to teach a history you know, of the cultural history. And um, a lot of the, the children, they're 15, 16 year old, they don't even know what, they don't know anything about the slave trade, right? they don't know, the, because the, the history, apparently in a lot of schools, um, you know, it, it's optional. So when they, they can choose to do history at, at uh, third form, they tell me. They no longer have to do it from first to third. So I just want to, Confirm what, what he said. What are your, I know you're big on education reform. Can you give us um, your, your thoughts on what um, Mr. Bauer said? Uh, coming to education reform, I know that we're talking a lot about the institutions that are being proposed. But I'm more concerned about the curriculum, what is being taught. I am not, I am more into the teaching of English, functional literacy skills, adult education. I am concerned too that even in those areas, we are not creating that kind of critical thinker, someone who understands the environment in which she lives and can act sensibly, act competently in that environment. I am concerned that the what is going into the curriculum. I do know that we had very strong British influence with European history. And European history is an option if you want to study that, and there are persons who want to study that. And we transitioned into Caribbean history, West Indian history, then Caribbean history. And now I am concerned about all these other influences 
that are funding education and education reform and what our children will be taught. I am still questioning the influences of the XQ Institute in our curriculum. I am still questioning and I ask in another setting, if we are looking at decolonizing education, what are the vestiges of the colonizers that we want to get rid of or we're seeking to get rid of in education and with what will we be replacing them? What will be put in place? That is not clear. We're hearing subject areas. We're hearing core curriculum. We are hearing things that sound good, but where's the substance? My concern, uh, Mr. Bat, like you, what are the, we're hearing citizenship, but what is citizenship? I know that there's a course that the NTI, the National Transformation Initiative, is offering on citizenship. I was part of a, a process with young people and we encourage them to, to, to do that course. But doing the course for the sake of saying I have a certificate in citizenship, when it is not internalized and evidence. We did not have a course in citizenship pre-independence, but we went into independence. I, you were a baby then at independence, but I was old enough, 10 plus, to know about independence. I knew the, 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 the excitement in a little village. We didn't have social media. We didn't have television. We listened to the Red Fusion. We heard people coming around and talking about independence. We saw people coming on. I remember my grandma used to work at Dodd's Plantation. And I used to be with her. And people coming around and we heard the people and all I heard was this man, Barra, 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 Skipper. Barra, 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 Skipper. How many of you remember when we had to draw the map, the flag, and I never saw so much blue crayon, and yellow crayon, and black crayon, and paper. And we were taught about these emblems. I remember my principal, Miss Hall, taking this rock down your back at future, and I must tell you, I have joy here in the national anthem now. I didn't like it back then. After knowing God save our gracious queen and, and liking it now, this was so boring, learning this new anthem. But I stand and sing it with pride, and I'm glad that I got this right down my back to learn the words. There was a sense of ownership. I'm so sorry to you, <laughs> I remember when Bencha and Marcia would have loved it. When Bencha, um, I don't know if anybody's that old in the group, but when they had Bencha at Convermere and, 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 and the Lions Club and the sponsored children and sent a bus for us, and we went to um, Convermere to Bencha and they, they were, 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 were um, bringing in independence. The, 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 I didn't go to the garrison, but I heard people talking about being soaked at the garrison. There was something, and, 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 and our schooling did this for us. Schooling prepared us for independence. I don't know what, there, there is something about, about um, there's something that is missing, and I'm concerned. I would like 
that instead of saying these are the offerings that the shows what will be taught in this education reform. Thank you. Address Mr. Bob's question. The independence economy, the independence legacy, our bar gave us universal free education, also health care, housing, and the expansion, subsidies for water, electricity, all of these things are the care package to you. That's what a care package was back then. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to know this. We are in Scarby, Macaroni, Toilet Paper, so <laughs> those are the things. Yes. So, the problem with education, as Rose mentioned, what are we going to lose? What are the colonial vestiges that? To education. The answer is funding. You heard the representatives from the Ministry of Education say they do not know how they're going to fund these reforms. They don't know because they don't want to say that they agreed with the new slave master to cut universal free education from primary straight to university. So you will eventually have to pay for schooling. Right? So that's why they're trying to make the changes along with the changes to the curriculum that we accept international legislators. And it started through globalization. I heard Rose speaking about radio fusion and things, but our airwaves, our radios, our TVs, with the introduction of the internet, gave us a blast of new cultures. And the airwaves and the radios will not play anything Barbadian music. From the time it hits September, the radio stations in Barbados are playing Christmas music. That's right. So you're not too patriotic by doing that if everything you have, if you're not even recognizing the word that people listen to. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Right. So, the IMF has said basically that the system that we have is too generous to its people and cuts need to be made to the, to the budget in order to educate Barbados for the new world and whatever new uh, things that they are looking to bring on stream because, again, back in the times the challenge that we have had was that the conservatives in Barbados did not believe that the taxes that they were paying was to go to educate the workers in the fields. They didn't believe it. These people are still alive today. Right? So they want to push the masses back into a whole of slavery and to achieve that is to take away your free education and cause it to pay. Thank you. Thank you, Kimar. Um, any other comment or questions from the movie? Is there a line in the movie, a scene in the movie, a character in the movie? Oh. I, I won't call, call out your stage name. <laughs> no, no, no. I really love the scene with Dean Harold Critchlow. And I wish with all my heart that Barbados would get back some real men of the cloth that would open their mouth in this place and tell the people get. Yeah, um, you know when I when I when I um, read about him and finally got a chance to meet him, I said, "Wow, this man is something else." And um, to know that Barbados would huddle around the radio um, to hear his voice and and. We love Bob, but when he was going off track, Dean Critchlow was there. That's that's the thing. Dean Critchlow was there too, you know. So um, anybody, any comments about that? A short comment because there's a gentleman coming here. Any comments about that? It's cool? Okay. How are you doing? Yeah, my name is Alvin. And only to my elder, I hope I get it right, that our Prime Minister will be responsible to help set up some weight businesses and that we have some, some emotions. But I find that when the words say that, you hear this word, do unto others as you have them going to you. And right now, the Marshall Institute is right. I hear this slogan, 
We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. Now listen, I go, I go up with them right here. I'm a joiner, I have a joiner shop, and they do good work. Now when I go to charges and their places, I have to buy the stamp paper from them, the glue, the nails, the glass, everything to do a product. And after I buy all these things, I can sit down around and say they have a product cheaper than the one I can build. I don't think it's fair. I believe that these need to, we need to start up the play and get serious. So the black men who have money in Barbados need to come together and you know supply us or help us to, to eradicate this, this, this nonsense that happened to us in Barbados. You understand? Yes. Thank you, thank you. So, the man said, Byron, have a lot of these white merchants, and it's true. Yeah? Uh, first, to address the first lady's comment. That's why we have Pastor 49. <laughs> so, we turn it up, Pastor 49, to take on that. I want to encourage more pastors and teachers and reverends to take on the role as supposed to the reverend who was done some music first in the public on behalf of the government. But the, the gentleman here raised a very important point. But I want to take him back to short history, which was Barbados under former Prime Minister and Economist on uh, He led a serious mission in Barbados to privatize a lot of key industries in the country. So a lot of the local manufacturers, a lot of the local producers suffered significant setback when the government facilitated economic policies to allow them to bring their foreign direct investment into the country, then locals had to compete with these companies that have a lot of money. Okay. What the government did to unfair a person like you is to give them import subsidies. So as opposed to import furniture, they could offer the furniture at a much more reasonable deal than yours and give them priority because it is all about foreign exchange, right? You are local, so when you're looking at it from a financial side, the government needs foreign exchange, so they're rather encouraged the trading of more foreign exchange or foreign-oriented goods as opposed to local goods because we've transitioned from a domestic system onto an international system where we need more foreign exchange than usual. We had standard in Barbados, the cost of mines and a couple of other man furniture manufacturers. Right? Now we have the Ashley Furniture Store and all of these furniture stores. Barbados didn't need any influx of furniture stores. We had enough local manufacturers that the government could have given them the subsidies and the tax reductions and the benefits. However, that creates a black economic base. And it rival the wealth of the international people. And the government gave them priority because they were bringing the foreign exchange. What we lost was our birthright to national ownership, Barbadian ownership through Onaka's economic policies and that began basically to disenfranchise local business and the growth of local entrepreneurs so much that Trinidad, supported by their government, led massive investment driven uh, decisions into Barbados and everybody's coming into Barbados but we don't have any Barbadian businesses expanding outside. Okay. So the entrepreneurs that we have, they're still living, they're still here, but there is no room for expansion, so you will box them to essentially close out the business, but the market still exists, so the persons who had the money just automatically take them up. And as we made the point earlier about controlling Barbados' cash flow. Right? So the government basically does not have an itinerary support for any local manufacturers, which includes a business like yours, our local citizens peer to develop in local industries, they rather privatize them to collect the seal on foreign exchange 
But then if we are growing future earnings and future revenues to invest in citizens like yourself and myself who have bright ideas that can create jobs for Barbados, they rather do it for the money. Was able 
1961 to build the deep water harbor because he had a vision diversifying the economy, looking at tourism, looking at import, looking at exports, the, the economists here can talk about that. But this is how we were seen in October 1966 as it, it, by the British colonizers in Britain talking about we being self-dependent, building an economy out of our resources and doing all of these capital development and doing all of these welfare, social, educational um, um, development for its people. How do we look now 57 years later? Can that be said of us, economists? Can that be said of us, bright marks here? We and all the other bright people here, no, we don't look good. We have become dependent on foreign funds, foreign monies. This can, if we were going into republic, a republic now, what this same, these same qualities attributing to us. I leave that to you to answer. But I was intrigued by how we were seen and it's a lot more. Google uh, for the the Barbados Independence 1966 debate in the UK Parliament and see how we were perceived and see how they were seen. Give them their independence because these people are ready and these people are self-sufficient and these people can govern themselves as a new independent nation.
how you know we need to get this to the people because they won't, we can't depend on them to show it. You can't depend on you can't sit and wait for CBC to show it. You can't depend on who is, who else is going to do this. We've offered this to people that are supposed to be doing it, and they don't want to do it. So we are going to the opposition will have to take it up on ourselves and um, to preserve this legacy. Can it be done in schools too? Yes, it can be. It can be. Yeah. So um, I, I think. Oh well, it seems like it's going away. Yes. Yeah, okay, one more, one more, and then we close. Anybody about the movie, anything about the movie that really, yes. Yes, hi, good night. Um, I found the movie really fascinating. And I think the question that we have to ask ourselves before we leave here tonight is Barbara, uh, Barbara's question is, what is the, in, the mirror image you have of yourself? And I, I think the reason why we have to ask that question is, it is do we see ourselves as Barbadians that have the right to live in this country, to work in this country, to leave a legacy for our families and our children going forward? If we see that and we have that mirror image of ourselves, then we have to get up and we have to come out and we have to stand and we have to speak out and we have to declare what we don't like and we have to um, proclaim what we want, and we have to just keep pushing forward. And I think, press and forward, thank you. And I think we should just, we need to stop just sitting down and in our bathrooms, in our bedrooms, in our kitchens, in our houses, and grumbling and complaining and talking about the ills of Barbados, but not be prepared to get up and come out and stand. And you're coming out with different. Yours might be financial, yours might be speaking out. Sorry, yours might be financial, yours might be speaking out, yours might be coming out and encouraging other persons. We all have talents and gifts and competencies. We need to use it. We're not opposition in words only. We have to be an opposition in deeds. So what mirror image do you have of yourself? For me, my mirror image is, although that my neighbor's strength is not very near, my parents' name was trying to bury here. I'm a Barbadian by descent. And I love this country, and this country is, is just my home, and I'm willing to fight for it. I'm not going to hide my face and my voice. I'm going to fight for my country. What mirror image you have in yourself? Wow. That's powerful. I am willing to fight for, for this country. My, my neighbor's train wasn't buried here, but I'm willing to fight for this country. Yeah? And with that, I think we could close tonight. You have one thing? Okay. Uh, this, this is to the gentleman that went before. Um, if you remember, they were intended on taking gold out of the national anthem. Yes. Right? And they were taking gold out of pieces of legislation and the like. So, the new republic is a godless republic. If you check my history, uh, Barbara was a God free man, his father being a weapon and everything, he put God into the constitution of Barbados. These laws are trying to take it over. I just want to end with a quote here from the late Marietta Tree, who was the wife of Ronald Tree. And Ronald Tree was one of the first owners of Sandy Lane. And she said, I like to thank, I like to think of Barbados as the Athens of the Caribbean, Athens, Greece. Uh, Mr. Barrow was in Guinea and Barrow put in place the different infrastructure for the building of a nation where one goes throughout Barbados, his time is set up there. To destroy the memory of Barrow would, would have, one would have to destroy the country. But most importantly, his legacy is imprinted in the minds and hearts of the people. His name is enshrined upon the scroll of history never to be erased. So therefore, Independence Day stays as beyond any shadow of a doubt, our power is the greatest nation builder in the history of the region. So, we need God needs to stay at Independence Day and Mr. Barrow needs to stay, but maybe some others can go. <laughs> Thank you.
church, but we're going to start. I, I love how that lady, that, what's her name, please? Jeannie says, my neighbor's trip was very near, but I would fight for this country. And listen, we just need a couple people like us. We just need a couple people, and the fight that we are talking about is not with guns and with, you know, but it's, it's to be able to stand on principles. Yeah? Just, yeah. To stand on principles and yeah, integrity. Yeah. What's the name of your your jewelry company? Well, she she's going through. What's the name of your company? Your your business? You. Okay, she does jewelry. So that's why I guess yeah. I get no pension. Yeah. So yeah, she's in jewelry. So listen, please support her. Support her business, support her. Um, yeah, she says jewelry and makes beautiful uh, jewelry. And I think the gentleman I forgot to say, did he close? He's closed now? It's still open. He has um, uh, ice cream and um, a a cookies, a nut cake, and popcorn. Okay, so. And, yes, thank you. And listen, I had, I mean, the, the best summer song. You turn around, everybody. You see that little chair with that? With that? Listen, that, they sell the best juices over there. I had this wonderful, my second time I had some summer song from them. And it's amazing. Just we support each other, right? Support one another. You know, and, and back to what I was saying about standing up and deciding that this is, these are some of the things that we can do, that we're going to fight. I'm going to fight for this country. And when they say, all those people, they're trying to, you know, the DLP says, oh, they are, they are trying to form another party and they're destroying our party. And the DLP say, oh, they're just making up noise and whatever. It's the people. We are the people and we're, we're talking and we need to keep speaking. Regardless of what banner it is, what color it is, what color that banner is, we're going to fight. We are sovereign Barbadians. <laughs> there you go. I have a love for this country when I hear my, recall my grandmother who was shot at in the 1937 riots, stealing potatoes, pickings from my mother and my two uncles, being shot at at the monk plantation. But my grandmother, the petite woman, said she rolled and she danced. And she held on to the bags of potato picking. That's why I'm here. I'm encouraging you to hold on to your bag. Duck and roll, but don't drop it. <laughs> Duck and roll, but don't drop it. We are carrying bags of survival. We are carrying them, it seems like pickings. But we've got a hungry and dependent nation to stand up for. So duck and roll, but don't drop to the back. We are here to represent and feed the hungry with education. We are here to feed the hungry with whatever pickings we have so that a nation can be satisfied. So whatever also you represent, whatever institution you represent, whatever organi organization you represent, I declare may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Lift up your face and let the Lord cause his face to meet yours and shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord cause his countenance to be always over you. When you walk through the waters, there will 
heart and they were very straight with it. And like Joshua was told when he was going into the new and promised land, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Be dis encouraged because the enemies, the Bible says it, and I believe it, the enemies you see before you now will not be there tomorrow. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord God, bless and keep Barbados. Put a hedge of fire around Barbados and cause honesty, cause integrity, cause courage to come forth. In the name of Jesus and the people say Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Blessings upon you and blessings upon our country, our homeland. Paris. Happy independence and bless each other. and the comfort of your homes, you can go to stepbystepfilms.com and it's available on Amazon. Stepbystepfilms.com and all of our other films as well. Thank you.